Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today we'll be taking a look at a real beast in the garage. This is the T29 Tier 7 American Heavy Tank and many of you will probably know this vehicle. It's a very well known vehicle and a well loved vehicle by nearly all players because it's fairly easy to handle and it will perform well in many situations and it's just probably if not the best it's definitely up there among the best tier 7 tanks in the game and it's definitely one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game especially as heavy tanks go so what is the t29 like well it is the classic american heavy tank it's a bit like the t34 it's hull armor is all right but it's not that good the turret is really really big but it's really well armoured, it's basically impenetrable from the front, and even sides and rear of the turret are really good. Uh, it's quite slow, and it gets a massive gun. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested, stay tuned, and I'll tell you all about it. Now, if we look at the research tree, we can see that it's actually quite big, you've got quite a lot of stuff to research, and the thing is that you can either research the T29 from the M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo, which is what I did, or you can get it from the M6. And the reason why I chose the Sherman Jumbo line is because I also wanted to go down for American medium tanks. And um, it's you can kind of divide up later if you choose the Sherman Jumbo, so that's why I took it. But if you aren't interested in the American medium tanks, I would recommend to get the T29 through the M6 because it makes the grind on the T29 a lot easier because on the M6 you can already research this 90mm gun. Now if you don't research that 90mm gun on the M6 because you for example come from the M4A3 E2, you'll have a real big problem because you will have to play the T29 with this miserable 76 millimeter gun that you already get at tier 5 on the m4 sherman so you you really do not want to be playing this tank with this gun believe me i had about five games in it with a gun and it's just absolutely useless it's absolutely ridiculous do not make the same mistake if you get the t29 and you haven't got this gun researched yet uh, save up i think it's about 5,000 free experience to get this gun here because you really do not want to be stuck with this gun on the tank. So first thing you want to do is mount the 90mm gun. After that you should research the tracks because they will add a lot more maneuverability to the uh, tank and it will also give you a higher load limit. So that means that you can mount equipment and so on, so that's quite good because it will make you less vulnerable to flanking for example. After that you want to get the improved turret because it will give you more view range, better armour and it will improve your rate of fire on your guns. Then you want to research the engines because the 90mm gun actually is already quite good at tier 7 so you can play the tank with it. So after that you want to get the engines because maneuverability with the top engine is just really really awful in this tank so make sure to unlock the top engine and then finally you want to get this beast of a 105 millimeter gun which is just insanely awesome uh, it's the same gun as the t32 users and at tier 8 with the t32 this gun is still really good so at tier 7 it's just an absolute beast and with this gun this tank just becomes one of the best if not the best tier 7 tanks in the game another thing that i should probably recommend is that you should definitely elite the t29 if you're planning on researching the t32 after that because nearly all the modules on the t29 carry over to the t32 that means if you've got a fully researched t29 tech tree you will not have much of a grind when you upgrade to the T32, which is quite nice. So definitely get all of the modules on your T29. Yeah, um, I've been waffling on enough about modules now, so probably you're all asking yourselves what the stats of this machine are like. And yeah, they are very good. First of all, it gets 1,250 hit points. Now that's not that much as tier 7 heavy tanks go. For example, the Tiger 1 gets 1,450. Well, it's German, so obviously it gets lots of hit points. I think the IS gets about the same amount of hit points. So it's not like little health, but it's kind of average for a tier 7 heavy tank, and it could actually be a bit more. Still, at tier 7, this will be enough to take four shots usually before going down, and that's actually quite a lot. It weighs 64.5 tons with my loadout. That's a lot. That's probably the one of the heaviest 
tanks at tier 7. That means that if you get into the right kind of situation, for example, you're going down a slope really fast and there's an enemy tank at the bottom, you can really ram them because hardly a tank at tier 7 will outweigh you with 64.5 tons. You've got a very powerful engine of 800 horsepower, but still that can't really make up for your bad weight and it leaves you with quite a bad power to weight ratio. I mean, it's not horrific, like this tank can still move quite well, but it's not good at all and you will really feel it. It definitely feels like a heavy tank. It's not one of these fast moving vehicles. Its speed limit is 35, which is acceptable for a heavy and its traverse speed is only 25, which is really slow. Coupled with a 26 degrees traverse speed, that means that especially if you're tracked by, for example, a scout, you're very, very vulnerable to flanking maneuvers. And for example, if an enemy performs a carousel around you, you will be quite helpless actually. So uh, you always have to be either in good cover or you have to have backup with you because otherwise this tank can be outflanked and outmaneuvered really easily. Next we're going to talk about the armor and for that we'll quickly go to Tank Inspector because the armor is actually very complex and interesting on this vehicle. So this is the armor model of the T29 and we can see straight away that the turret frontally is really strong like we're uh, used to on the American heavy tanks. So if we mouse over here, we can see that you will need up to 460 penetration to uh, put a shell through this armor here. So not even tier 10 tanks will usually be able to penetrate your frontal turret. And that means that this tank is really, really good in hold down positions, especially because it's got really good gun depression too. Now, uh, at the sides next to the gun mantlet, the armor is a bit thinner, but it's still like 250 millimeters. So none of the tanks you're going to encounter will realistically have a chance of penetrating your frontal turret. But if you are hold down, uh, you have to remember that you've got this massive cupola at the rear of your turret, which still is quite well armored. It's uh, 100 millimeters all round and it's it's kind of rounded so it kind of has got an increase of armor effectiveness because of angling so with a 175 millimeter gun for example you can have some problems still trying to penetrate this cupola but if a t29 is in a hold down position you always have to watch out for this and you for example have to keep your tank moving forwards and backwards or move your turret left and right over time to make it more difficult for your enemies to hit this weak spot on the sides we can see that the turret is quite flat and therefore very easy to penetrate so most tier 7 tanks will be able to put shells through the sides and rear of the turret very easily easily. One thing that you might notice are these kind of things that stick out on the side of the T29 and you might think that they are weak spots but if we mouse over we can see that they aren't actually, they are no hitbox zones. So if you fire at these your shot won't even go through, it will just be absorbed by these little range finders here. So don't even try shooting at those, you'll just waste your shells. As for the hull, it's kind of a bit, it's kind of bad news and then again it isn't because it's 102 millimeters thick, which is actually quite strong, and it's angled very well, so that means that if you're facing enemies straight on, it um, amounts up to about 150 millimeters of armor, and if you can angle your hull like this about, say, uh, 160 millimeter shells and even some Russian 175 millimeter penetrating shells will not be able to go through this upper plate here. However, the lower plate is only 70 millimeters strong and then you've also got this machine gun port here that's quite flat and can be penetrated very easily. Also, if you're angling the tank, you have to remember that you've kind of got this very, very weak armor zone at the rear that's only 50 millimeters strong. And that means that even if you're angled like this, enemies will be able to quite reliably put shots through the rear of your hull if they can hit it. So you always have to watch out for that, but very few people know that. And if you're facing a T29 like this, most people will not aim here. They will probably be just aiming for the lower hull. So yeah, it's not that much of a risk. But for example, if a T29 is side scraping, you should always remember this. And then obviously sides and rear, as we're used to on American heavies, are absolutely garbage. You Basically anything will be able to penetrate your sides and rear, even if you just present them to your enemy at an extremely steep angle, 
still anything will go through really and you also have to watch out for artillery because for example your rear armor as well as your side armor will give you hardly any protection against splash damage so always be careful there um, and one thing that i forgot to mention earlier is that you've also got these kind of bumps up here on the hull you can see them here and they make the whole armor flat which means that you can penetrate them very easily because they're only 76 millimeters strong at the front so the armor's weaker there and it's less angled so with 100 millimeters pen about or with about 120 millimeters of pen you should be able to go through so that was it for the tank inspector let's go back to the garage to check out the rest of the stuff now we'll move on to the gun and the gun is really the best thing about this tank in my opinion except for the turret armor so uh, i quickly pull up the gun stats here and i will be comparing this gun to the russian 122 millimeter gun that the IS gets because they are actually quite similar. So here we go, this is the IS's gun and straight away you can see that the calibre is lower on the 105 so it's 105 millimeters instead of 122 and that means that for example the 122 millimeter gun will be able to do overmatch some armor zones that the 105 can't overmatch for example 40 millimeters of armor aren't a problem for the 122 but they are for the 105 if it comes to overmatching but therefore the american gun gets in a lot better rate of fire it's kind of half a round per minute better which is quite a big difference actually the penetration also is significantly better on the american gun now it's not as good as the penetration on for example the tiger but it's still very good at t7 and you definitely realize the difference if you come from playing the russian tanks however it loses a bit of the alpha damage to compensate for that it only has got 320 rather than the 390 for Russian gun and I mean you know you have to see this you have to put this into some kind of perspective here 320 at tier 7 is still really good this is one of the guns with the highest alpha damage at tier 7 320 is really nice it's just not as good as the 390 of a Russian gun but 390 is just absolutely ridiculous at tier 7 basically and I think this is actually the second highest uh, alpha damage of any of the tier 7 heavy tanks if I'm not mistaken. The shot dispersion is actually better on the American gun now it's not good it's 0 0.42 only which is still quite inaccurate and you really have to get into close to medium range combat in order to make this gun work but it's still a lot better than the 0.46 of a Russian gun and the aiming time also is way better and that for me is the main advantage of the American gun over the Russian gun really is the aiming time is 2.3 seconds compared to 3.4 seconds that's 1.1 second better aiming time that's a massive difference and while 2.3 is still kind of long for a heavy tank at tier 7 it's really really good and it will really make all the difference especially if you're having to engage enemies at long distance for one reason or the other and all in all i think i prefer the 105 millimeter gun because i mean obviously if you are in street combat or you are at very very close ranges the russian gun maybe is better but the american gun gets a bit more flexibility just because it's not as derpy as the russian gun and basically the american gun is better in every aspect except for the alpha damage so yeah the gun for me definitely is one of the strong suits of the t29 and it's definitely one of the best guns at tier 7 except for the accuracy which is kind of a real letdown and the rate of fire can sometimes be quite unnerving too because for example if you're engaging a tiger in a one-on-one -on -one combat around a corner say the tiger will often be able to get two shots into you for each shot that you put into him but if you manage to uh, force him to trade shots with you one to one so that means that he can put one shot in and you put one shot in at the same time uh, then that will mean that you will come out on top because you've got a lot higher alpha damage so well we haven't got that many stats left actually 380 meters view range with the upgraded turret that's really good the average view range at tier 7 is 370 so that's above average and will allow you to pull up some good spotting even though this tank has not really got the speed or the size to perform the role of a scout so don't get me wrong here but definitely if you're for example in a one-on-one -on -one situation the t29 will quite often be able to spot the enemy before they spot him especially if it's engaging lower tier tanks and then the signal range is 745 meters which is excellent it's basically a tier 10 radio 
So yeah, tactics in the T-29, they're actually quite straightforward, it's just a classic American heavy tank. The best thing you can do with this tank is go hold down, hide your hull behind some rubble or an undulation of the ground, and you've got the great gun depression of 10 degrees to really make that happen, for example, if you're going up a hill. And if your enemies can only see your turret, they will bounce all the time, basically. And if you can jiggle your turret around so that makes it more difficult for them to hit your cupola, then that's just perfect. And also your cupola is, well, it's at the rear of the turret, it's kind of difficult to hit, and it's angled, so even that is not that easy to penetrate. And yeah, that's basically more or less it. You should not try to rush out, for example, on an open map on your own on one flank without any support because that means if you encounter maybe two or three enemies there that are quite maneuverable, say medium tanks, they'll be able to take off their tracks with one well aimed shot and then just carousel you all day long and just chew you to bits and you won't be able to do a single thing about it. So you always have to be very careful about that. And also I would always recommend to angle your hull because many people think that the T-29's hull armor is really bad and it actually isn't. I mean 102mm at this angle is actually quite good. And although it's not very much really compared to the massive turret, it's still able to bounce some shots, especially when you're encountering lower tier tanks. And especially if you angle it, you will be able to really maximize your effective armor. And yeah, the T-29 is not the fastest tank in the world, so you always have to be a bit careful. You can't really adjust to changes on the battlefield all that well. So once you've made your choice and committed yourself to one flank over other, you will not be able to change around anymore. So make your decisions carefully. For equipment, the choice again is very straightforward. You definitely want to have a vertical stabilizer, which is very good that this tank can mount it. It also needs vents and the gun rammer, there's basically no discussion about it, these are the three bits of equipment that you really want on this tank. For the crew, uh, I'd probably get repairs as a first set of skills on the entire crew, and then just trade it for brothers in arms, because brothers in arms is just massive on this tank. After that, probably repairs again, six cents of the commander, let's see what we've got for the gunner. Um, yep, snapshot would not be a bad idea, uh, dead eye would be good too, because Actually, this gun here, this 105mm gun, does massive module damage, and the Deadeye perk will maximize that, so if you can pick up Deadeye at one point over other, that would be really good. For the driver, well, you could get controlled impact, but I think the speed kind of reduces the effectiveness of ramming in this vehicle, so I would probably get clutch braking or smooth ride, probably clutch braking because the traverse speed on this tank is not very good, and after that smooth ride. For your radio operator, situational awareness is a good choice because your view range is again one of your strong suits, and for your loaders you obviously want to have safe storage, and adrenaline rush actually wouldn't be a bad idea either at some point, but first of all safe storage and then yeah just go from there. Yeah, so that's been enough of the garage for the time being, so let's head out and see how this tank performs on the battlefield. So the first game I'm showing you is on El Halouf, and I'm using the 90mm gun at this point because I haven't unlocked the 105 yet. And this should be quite interesting for you because if you grind out the modules in this tank the way I recommended you to, you will be using the 90mm gun quite a while. Now as you can see, with the stock equipment, or more or less stock equipment, this tank is very slow and you can see how unmaneuverable it is. So I arrive here after the other T29s and even after the KV-1 which is actually not very good. So our, it seems like yeah, our AS just went out and died. And there are quite a lot of tanks here. Now this is quite a good place to be in your T29 because you've got good gun depression and you've got a very strong turret. So that means enemies won't be able to penetrate you and do damage to you all that easily. But um, there are so many enemies and allies here that it's actually like there, aren't, there isn't that much space to maneuver here. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling quite kind of hemmed in by all these people around me. So yeah, I'm basically just fighting around this corner and trying to fight off all these enemy tanks. And as you can see, with a 90mm gun, if we go for the lower glaciers, we've got no problems penetrating the KV-3 really. So it, it, you can perform with a 90mm gun if you know where to hit. So 
so I put a shot through the low glaciers of IS. And actually the damage is not too bad. It's the damage is actually exactly the same, I think, as on the Tiger one, for example. You can actually quickly check it. If we mouse over the ammo. Yeah, it's 240 average damage, so it's exactly the same damage as the Tiger one gets. But obviously it's uh, its penetration is way worse, like it's 160 millimeters of pen, which is not that good. So right there you could see what the angled upper glaciers of a T29 can do, bouncing the shot with ease. And right now I've realized that it's time to stop being aggressive and pushing and uh, I'm just going to hang back here now, or maybe not. Okay, I'm not going to hang back, but um, anyway, like kind of our enemies are kind of coming, starting to push us rather than we pushing them and it's time to let them take over the offensive and stop poking out really still only takes a few shots for t29 i think that t29 yeah he had the best gun and he still bounced off my hole probably now it was a shame that i couldn't track the t29 in place so that would have been a really good thing if i could and that shot would never hit really or if it would it wouldn't have penetrated probably So all these wrecks here are making it really difficult for me to hit the enemies, but now we've taken out quite a few of them actually, so yeah, these T-29s are not all that keen on coming out really. Put a nice shot through his lower glaciers, easily penetrating. The fact that he's coming up the slope is also decreasing the angle on his lower glaciers, which makes it easier for me to penetrate. Now I'm hoping that he might, right there you can see that somebody put a shot through this kind of range finder on the T29 turret and it obviously didn't do any damage. So now I'm probably going to snipe to, yeah I tried to snipe his cupola but he draws the cover before I can do it. So I'm trapped waiting for the repair. And Right there you can see he wasn't even angling his upper glaciers and I still bounced. So against lower tier tanks upper glaciers of a T29 can be really troll and if you're for example in a tier 6 vehicle you usually will have to go for the lower glaciers so I really am not too keen to poke against this T29 because if he rolls high he can one shot me right now however I can also one shot him and actually in retrospect I probably should have loaded an APCR shell here just to make sure that my one shot counts that I get at him like right there, if I had taken that shot with APC out, would definitely have gone in. But he does a really stupid mistake giving me a side, making it able for me to track him. Uh, and now I can just easily put a second shot through and take him out. So I've got two kills at this point, and the enemies are capping the base. Obviously, it's taking ages because it's encounter, but still, somebody has to go in there and cap at some point. Uh, not cap, break the cap, sorry. So probably this is going to be me, although this IS is moving in too, so. I'm, I'm basically just flanking around here to make it possible to get shots into the cap circle once that IS spots something. And yeah, there we go, it's a T29. On very low health, so I can one-shot him. And I haven't got his outline, and I bounce. What a shame. Can we make it happen this time? I really don't know why I'm not getting an outline there. And yes, finally. Okay, third kill. And now there's only an IS left, so the game's basically over. We would have to be absolutely donkers to lose this. Oh, see, I created a new word in this video. Donkers. <laughs> and just look at this. Look at my hole. How many bounces I was able to pull off. Fair enough, a lot of shots went through as well. But if you think that the hull of the T29 is not armoured well, then you are mistaken because it actually can bounce a lot of shots. So yeah, that's that game over and I mean I didn't perform amazingly well, but it just showcases that even with a 90mm gun, the T29 is quite a performer and you can do well. And I think that game just really showcased the potential of a T29's armour. So I've still got two other games lined up for you guys. One of them absolutely amazing and one is quite good. So stay tuned and we'll hop right in. So here's the second game and we're on Sacred Valley uh, in, a, in a tier 8 game actually. So it's not the perfect matchup. And in a tier 8 game this tank here can look after itself a lot better than for example the IS. And even in a tier 9 game, this tank will still perform better than the Russians, just because it's got 
better DPM and it's got better penetration which is the main factor actually which changes its performance in higher tier games. So what I'm doing here is I'm heading over to this north kind of ridge on Sacred Valley because I figured that I could put my gun depression to good use here. And right here I'm just testing out the gun depression, gun elevation angles which are both amazing on this tank. And I'm I realize that uh, none of my allies is all too keen on advancing, so I do not want to be the first one up there to face tanks like the T-32 or the Tiger 2 or Yak Panther or whatever. So I'm just waiting here, uh, waiting for the enemies to come round. And yeah. So I've got a Yak Panther KV-1S and the T-32 with me. So only one tier 8 tank and now the T-32 decides to attack. And um, the Yak Panther says, stay and we're dead, which is kind of right, because if you want to push this, um, or if you want to go down this way, you have to kind of be quite aggressive, because if you can get to this kind of position here, uh, or a bit further up actually, then you are able to put really good sniping support in on the, wally, uh, on the tanks that are in the valley. And right there you can see my sixth sense going off, so that means I've been spotted, so I have to be careful. And there's a KV-1S being quite aggressive, so I put a shot in and he misses a shot. Right there, that's the difference between the Russian guns and the American gun, the 2.3 second aiming time rather than 3.4 seconds. It really makes all the difference in these clutch, clutch situations. So there's a Tiger 1 there, and this tank really is not the best kind of vehicle for giving long range support with 0.4 accuracy, or it's actually 0.43. But still, with the tigers, uh, with the target as big as the tiger, uh, and not all that much armor, it's actually quite easy. So I set that IS-2 on fire there, making a lot of damage. And now there's a Yak Panther and the Yak Panther 2 up there, and also a Lova. Now the Yak Panther gets taken out really quickly, we're basically just taking these tanks apart up here. And I'm kind of... Well, it's just basically a rant here. We cannot lose this game anymore, really, unless we make any really big mistakes. The score's 83. The Yak Panther donks a shot, but there's still a Lova up there. But now he's looking in the other way, so actually I could poke. But I think the Yak Panther's reloaded by now, so I really don't want to push my luck here. And, yeah, I'm kind of risking getting shot from tanks in the valley, but at this point there aren't that many enemies left. So I'm just risking it. And I take a shot through the wall because after patch 8.10 you can do that. Putting a shot into the Lova. Doing some more damage. And that's if we can get this Hellcat here. Yes we can. Firing through two walls and doing 301 damage. The average damage in this gun is 320 which is quite big. Um, can we put another shot in? Yes, first kill. Very nice. And the T-32 is taking quite a lot of damage here from the Tiger 2. And basically, just by the virtue of being here, I'm basically distracting with Yak Pan for overtime and not making it possible for him to participate in the battle. So, I decide to take a shot, and you may realise that he hasn't got the top gun. He's still using the 105 that carries over from the Yak Panther. That means that its alpha damage is only 320, which is the same as mine, and not 490. And that means that I can quite comfortably trade shots for me because I've got the HP to take the hits. So I repair, or my track is repaired because I've got quite a good repair crew. And the T-32 has been taken out, but that doesn't matter because my great gun depression allows it to easily own that Tiger 2 who was on very low health. And right now the T-25-2 is the only enemy alive and that's see if we can get him. No, we can't the IS-3 finish them off. So yeah, I hope that game just showcased for you guys what you can achieve with a T-29 in the right kind of situation. Right there, uh, that really showed the good gun depression, the flexibility of this vehicle due to the relatively good rate of fire in comparison to the alpha damage and the great aiming time. So yeah, um, that was a really nice game and although the game was very, very short, we still really made a difference there. And picked up three kills and did loads of damage. So that's look at the post-game stats to find out how well we did exactly. So we picked up nearly 50,000 credits and a ridiculous score of 8,925 experience. But that was for the times five for the first victory of the day and with a premium account, so it's not quite as good as it sounds. Still, we got enough experience to get us our first class mastery badge. 
and we see that we can see that we were the best on the entire team as far as experience goes and we dealt out the second most damage after the T32 and got the most kills along with the T32 as well. So we did really well there and considering that we weren't top tier, so it was a tier 8 game, we were a tier 7 tank, we really really performed well in that game. On the enemy team, basically they didn't stand a chance. The Yak Panther 2 was alright, but even he did not perform that well and basically we just ran those guys over. We fired 11 shots of which 10 hit and all 10 penetrated so yeah we were firing at very close range most of the time so that's not surprising. We did 3187 damage with only 10 shots so that's quite impressive at tier 7. We received 2 hits of which 2 penetrated so that's not that good really but in a tier 8 game that's not surprising really and for example the Yak Panther got shots, shots at my hole so yeah that's alright but we were able to tank with our HP pool and yeah, we, we weren't risking that much. We received 640 potential damage, which is not that much, so we still had half of our health remaining at the end of the game. We detected three enemies, damaged seven, which is a lot actually, and destroyed three, and travelled 0.86 clicks, so we didn't really move that far. And that game was over in five minutes, so yeah, it was really, really short. And, well, one thing that I didn't mention earlier was that the shell costs with the T29 are really high, so you have to pay about 1000 credits for each shot. So that means that we had to spend quite a lot on resupplying our ammunition, and that means that we couldn't keep all that much of our money. Still, uh, we ran quite a big profit, and if you perform alright, you will usually run a profit on this tank, but you should not miss too many shots because they are very expensive. So, yeah, that was an alright game, but I've got something really amazing lined up for you guys. Uh, I didn't play this game coming up in a second, but it was sent in for the 1k subscriber replay contest and I haven't watched it, but I looked at the post-game stats and they look really impressive, so let's head in and see how a pro plays the T29. So here we go and <laughs> funnily this here is Austin Drew again who was already starring in his Yak Tiger in the video I uploaded yesterday or when you watch this video it's probably day before yesterday. Anyway, he was showing off his skills in the Yak Tiger then, and now he's in his T29. I actually didn't notice that this is the same guy till uh, just <laughs> when I opened this replay file. So, massive shout out to you, Austin. He actually sent in this game for the replay contest, and it wasn't quite good enough to win, but it was good enough to get shown in my T29 review. So, right here, he's taken up a defensive position on the heavy street on Himmelsdorf. You can see he's using Binox on his T29 and he's also got camouflage equipped so it seems like he's quite serious about this tank. And he's kind of in a more or less in a hold down position here behind this pile of rubble. Uh, sorry for that, there's always my antivirus program sending me some kind of messages in the middle of when I'm doing something. So he snipes the cupola of the Tiger P and although the accuracy is not very good on the T29 it's still good enough to make a shot count against the Tiger P. And that was actually quite impressive there because he was able to bounce a 152mm high explosive shell on the front of his turret off the KV-2. So that's really cool. And here's the Tiger P again. Let's see if he can get Cupola again. But the T29 drives forwards, so he's going to try to snipe the T29's Cupola. And right there, that's the massive weak spot on the T29. And although it's difficult to hit, if it's hit, by a gun like this, it will usually go through. So you have to be really careful about that. So now he's not bothering about the cupola. He tries to just hit the side of the Tiger Peace turret. But uh, right there you could really see the trollish accuracy on the gun. Missing. But then he snipes the cupola again, which kind of compensates. So the SU-152 is being very aggressive here. And Austin Drew is giving him kind of fire cover. So he puts a shot into the KV-2's turret, which is not the best armor target in the world. So his commander's been taken out, and let's see if he repairs him. But actually, he doesn't really need his commander right here. I mean, view range is not that important on Himmelsdorf, and he's got Binox anyway. So he doesn't really want to take that shot because of his trollish accuracy. He could put a shot into the SU-152 and I'm not quite sure what this guy's doing there because I mean the SU-152 basically is a glass cannon. It hasn't got any ammo whatsoever except for the gun mantlet and he's basically just gun blocking Austin Rue here. 
and stopping him from taking these shots at the enemies. So the T29 is there again. And he does exactly what I would have done too. He waits till the T29 draws back into cover and then takes out the KV2, removing a very dangerous gun from the game. And let's see if we can get the cupola of the T29 again. And luckily his shot goes to the left, uh, to the right a bit, sorry. Uh, just when the T29 decides to retreat. And right now he shows some very good map awareness. Because as you can see, the left flank of Austin Drew's team is really crumbling. And enemies have managed to push through nearly all the way to the base. So Austin Drew realizes that it's time to relocate and move down to defend the base. And he's following this AMX M4 and... Yeah, he's right here, you can see, on hard terrain, aka roads, the T-29 can actually move quite quickly. And uh, one of the main reasons why the T-29 often feels sluggish is because a lot of these American heavy tanks, and the T-29 as well, uh, have got very bad soft and medium terrain resistance. So that means that tracks really, you know, uh, slow the tank down on soft terrain. But... This terrain is very hard, it's roads obviously, so he's performing very well as far as speed goes. So let's see if we can take out this KV-1S, yes we can with a good roll, well not a good roll, it was 308, average roll is 320, but still it um, was enough to take out the KV-1S. And oh, he's in a very dangerous situation here, enemies firing at him from all directions and angles. So, he's retreating, making it able to defend himself more easily, because now the enemies can only advance from one direction, hopefully. So, the VK comes round and he puts a very good shot into the front rifle of the VK, taking off his tracks. So, let's see if he can put off the same thing again. Now, the Tiger 1 gun blocks him, sadly, which is not very nice of him, but with an above average roll, Austin Drew is able to secure his third kill. Now the IS is kind of uh, driven into a dead end here. Not quite sure what he was thinking of. And now hopefully Austin Drew will be able to take him out. He's got the help of that Tiger one. So let's see what he can do. Now you can see that the IS basically has got no problems putting the shot through the hole of the T29 there. Now uh, Austin Drew is retreating. Although he isn't, he's not giving this Tiger 1 a chance to go in there. Now he is, but it appears that the Tiger 1 has reconsidered and is not so keen on facing that IS anymore. Maybe he's trying to go round to get shots into the rear of that IS, which is actually quite a clever thing to do. This is not the kind of situation where you want to be in, because the T29 does not excel at trading shots with an IS at this close range. And what we're doing here is really good. This is excellent teamwork. The... T29 here, Austin Drew is keeping the IS occupied and the Tiger's flanking round. The IS predicts the maneuver, but now he can't make up his mind where to point his gun. He's pointing at Austin Drew, he's distracted, the Tiger can put shots into him, and right there you can see the IS bouncing. And let's see if the Tiger can take him out. Or maybe I can the Tiger hit him? And yeah, there we go. The Tiger gets a kill. And things are not looking good at all for Austin Drew's team here. He's alone with his Tiger against two enemy to seven tanks a kv1s and an m44 so usually they would you lose this game but let's see what austin drew can make of it so there's the enemy t29 he's on medium health so austin drew puts a shot in not quite sure if that shot tracked for t29 obviously it didn't so now the T29 is on very low health, so in one shot range of both of uh, the tanks on Austin Drew's team. And there's the Tiger P again. Can he take him out? A very clutch shot there, but it uh, doesn't fail him. And he manages to take out the T20. Oh, not the T20, sorry. The Tiger P. But in turn, the T29 gets a shot into Austin Drew, leaving him on very low health. So... Austin Drew's telling the Tiger to advance and take out the T29 there in chat because he's got the high HP pool. But the KV-1S is there covering the T29. And, oh, he wasn't aimed in the right spot. He would have been able to take out the T29 there. But he just donked the shot. But there we go, there we go. 
He's on five kills now, and now things are looking a lot better for them. They've only got a KV-1S and an M4040 face down. Still, the Tiger 4 is kind of being hesitant about it. And maybe if the KV-1S retreats a bit further, Austin Rue will be able to snipe him through the windows. And I think that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, let's see if he can make it happen here. Come on, and yes, there's Top Gun. <laughs> and now there's only the M44 left, so we've basically got this game in the bag. That was really impressive teamwork there. So, yeah, respect to the Tiger and Austin Rue here. They coordinated that really well, well, although they weren't in a platoon. So, um, the Crusader is telling him that the art is at A1, which, yeah, is kind of nice of him because uh, Austin Rue played a good game, but on the other hand, it's kind of a bit unfair on the RT. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't really do that kind of stuff. Because, you know, the RT is kind of trying, and even though it seems like the RT is kind of... Uh, the Crusader said the RT's sleeping, so it doesn't seem like the RT's playing a very good game here. But still, you know, uh, he deserves to have a fair chance. And the Crusader's kind of taken that away from him. So we're just basically homing in on him here. And there he is. And Ostendru secures a 7th kill on the artillery. What a great game. Carrying his team through this with the Tiger 1. Very, very nice. Um, have, that's just not comparable to what I was able to achieve in the Team 29. Uh, what a tank and what a game. Great job, Ostendru. And uh, yeah, let's check out the post game stats. So, Ostendru got 90,000 credits nearly and nearly 8,000 experience, but this time that wasn't a times 5 but a times 3. And he also obviously got his mastery badge in the T29, a steel wall, a top gun medal, and a sniper medal. And if we look for team score, we can see that he managed to deal out 5,000 damage, which was like three times as much as the second best on his team. He also got seven frags, which is amazing, and picked up 1,775 experience. And that's just base experience about modifiers, which is just absolutely great. If we looked at the detailed report, we can see that he fired 21 shots, of which 19 hit and 18 penetrated, allowing him to do this amazing 5,000 damage, which is just really a lot. Like, uh, that's an amount of damage that uh, would be alright to score, for example, in the tier 10 heavy tank or even a tank destroyer. So that's really cool. He received 18 hits, of which only 4 penetrated, and 1 did splash damage, and 14 ricocheted. So <laughs> that just shows you how good the T29's armor is can be if you use it correctly. He received 5,440 potential damage. That's absolutely ridiculous. And he was able to detect four enemies, damage eight, and destroy seven. And he traveled quite far too because obviously he had to switch sides of the map. Yeah, so that game is really cool and impressive and massive shout out to Austin Drew for sending in so much great content for the replay contest. And I hope he could really showcase the T29 for you in a way that I failed to do in my games. And uh, yeah, I just cannot stress enough how much I love this tank. But that's kind of more topic of the summary. So let's go back to the garage for that. So, the T29, well, it's quite obvious what my verdict of this tank is going to be like. I, I absolutely love it. It's one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game, and I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep this tank. I'm already halfway through the grind on the T32, but I'm not going to sell this tank because it's just such a joy to play. And it's definitely the best, or one of the best, tanks at tier 7 and it's just really really good it uh, performs reasonably well in nearly all situations and it's as i said it's just simply a joy to play so definitely think of picking one up and if you're on your way down the american heavy tank line you're definitely in for a treat if you come to tier 7 and uh, yeah stay tuned for other videos of the tier 10 uh, of the american heavy tanks for example the tier 8 t32 review coming up soon and yeah, I hope you appreciated this review and my opinions on the tank. If you've got anything to add, make sure to do so in the comments. And give me some feedback too, what I could improve or something like that. So yeah, if you like this video, consider rating it down below or even subbing to my channel. And I hope I see you out there on the battlefield on one of my next videos. Bye-bye.